I'm Barbara Marshak from Servomex, and I am the product manager for the power and emissions market segment. My name is Zorina Stanley, and I am the global market manager for the hydrocarbon processing business. Today, we're going to be talking about ammonia. And first of all, Barb, why would somebody particularly want to measure ammonia in their process? So we're actually not measuring ammonia in a process, we're actually measuring ammonia in emissions. And so part of what we're looking at is a lot of people have to regulate NOx. So NOx is NO, NO2, it's hazardous to the, the atmosphere and you have to reduce it, it's regulated. So what people are doing in order to reduce it to the ultimate level is to add a SCR or SNCR catalyst. What do you mean by SCR and SNCR? SCR is basically selective catalytic reduction, so it means it has a catalyst, whereas SNCR is selective non-catalytic reduction. The difference being is that they both do the same thing where you bring your emissions in and you have NOx reduction coming out. So when I bring my emissions in, I have NO, NO2, I need to reduce them. In order to reduce them, I put ammonia in there. So either I have to have a very long process uh, uh, reaction time, which is SNCR, okay. and I have to run it to high temperatures, or if I have a smaller space, I can put a catalyst in there. The difference between the two is that with SCR, I can get almost 90, 95% reduction of ammonia, using ammonia to reduce the NOx to nitrogen and water. On SCR, SNCR, you're probably in the 60, 40 to 60 range. But what does Servomex offer in terms of being able to measure ammonia? This looks like um, a laser that could possibly do that job. So one of the things that you're looking at is now that we're adding ammonia, if you add too much ammonia, one of the problems that you're going to have is you get particulate buildup. Things start to clog, things start to, to corrode because this particulate is actually very acidic. So what we want to do is be able to look right after the end of the SCR, SNCR, and watch the ammonia levels. We want to keep them at a very small level, either in general uh, between 5 and 2 ppm. And the best way to do that is actually with a laser. We can actually be right smack in the process, monitoring it without having to extract it. One of the problems with extracting a gas, bringing it to another analyzer, is that you actually lose some of your ammonia when you travel all the way to the analyzer. And you can also have blockage. You have all sorts of issues with extracting. By the time you get to the analyzer, you're not even sure you had the right amount of ammonia. So if I'm trying to control something, I want something right there, fast, immediate. And that's why the laser is the best option. So when you're installing something like the laser, um, that could be prone to vibrations and all sorts of different issues. What's the key to installing a laser and getting a good measurement? So there's a number of different things. It's not just in the installation, it's also in the design of the laser. So one of the things that Servomex has done is that when you install the laser, especially in something that has high dust, so like let's just say the coal. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're looking at this, coal has a lot of dust. There's a lot of dirt flying around there. Um, this is a laser, so as a light beam, as soon as a light beam hits a particle, it's going to scatter. If you have too much scattering particles in there, you're never going to see it on your detector. Okay. So we have a transmitter on one end, we have a receiver on the other end. My light trans transmits through the gas. If I have too many particles bouncing my light around, I don't see it. So what we can do is, if it's in a really high dusty atmosphere, we can close down what we call our path length by using a slotted uh, fitted pipe. So the pipe actually stabilizes. It goes from one transmitter to the, to the receiver. It stabilizes it. So when one end moves, this, one, this end moves. It also narrows our beam path. So even though we still have particles in there and they're scattering, we've narrowed the, the number of them. And so we can actually calculate how big that slot needs to be in order for us to get a good signal. So that's one way that we do it in order to reduce high dust atmospheres. And I've heard the term line lock. What do you mean by that? So now that I have my laser, I've aligned it. Um, I've aligned it on uh, basically either a process gas or I align it in uh, ambient air. So then when I bring my process up, everything's going along fine. I've got ammonia in my stream, I'm, I'm monitoring it. When my process goes down, guess what? Ammonia goes away. So if I just, and the water goes away, most will sit there and look at the water signal. 
So if my water signal goes away, I no longer know where I am supposed to start and stop. I don't know where my peak is. And so one of the things that we do with our laser is that we actually take the beam that's traversing from the receiver or the transmitter to the receiver and we split it. We split it immediately and it goes to its own little detector. So we actually have a laser beam that's focused on ammonia, seeing our sample. At the same time, we have a little reference cuvette that it's, it's locking on. So even if we lose our process, it always knows where the ammonia line is. So can you give us some examples of the types of customers already using this solution? One of the areas that we've uh, dominated quite heavily has been in the power industry in China. So in China, they have a lot of coal, uh, they have a lot of particulate dust, so we've done very successfully by putting basically our laser on a corner of the SCR or SNCR uh, outside uh, chassis part. Um, where we also are successful is any area where you don't have a lot of dust. So when you start burning clean fuels like uh, natural gas, mm -hmm. they're very low in particulate. You don't need that fixed pipe. So then that brings up the other issue is that if I don't have a fixed pipe that, that locks this one, one side to this side, now what do I do? So one of the things that Servomex does is they actually have a beam path that's broader. So we take our, our actual laser beam and we broaden it out. And so um, even though you're, you're line locked here, we use a lot of extra power. We can see it here. And so then if one side moves a little bit versus the other, we actually can move uh, the, the laser back and forth, or the laser will move back and forth, but we have a beam uh, signal that's large enough so that uh, small movements won't be seen. Okay. And it still functions. Well, thank you very much. If you require any further information, please contact your local business center or visit us on servermex.com.